The following program, The Russ Belleville Show, is intended for responsible adults only. We advocate to the repeal of marijuana prohibition for adults. We discuss the science, culture, and controversy about America's marijuana laws. We do not advocate any illegal activity and encourage all listeners to learn their state and federal marijuana laws. Opinions and claims made by guests and advertisers on The Russ Belleville Show are their own, and The Russ Belleville Show cannot be held legally responsible for their validity or reliability. Viewer discretion is advised. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a seed, you plant it, you grow it, you dry it, you roll it, you smoke it, and it goes down smooth. Hey! Spanning the continent to bring you the truth about cannabis and marijuana law reform. I smoke pot and I like it a lot. <laughs> From the promise of legalization. Of prohibition. And one major responsibility is to encourage people to use less drugs. The Russ Belleville Show, the voice of the marijuana nation. Yeah, I hear you. You had a question for me. Now, here's your host, Radical Russ Belleville. We love it. Tokers and Tokens, and welcome to the show. It is Thursday, August 29th, 2013, and it's got to be 420 somewhere in the world. It's also got to be an amazing day in marijuana law reform. If you have not heard the breaking news, Attorney General Eric Holder on a conference call with governors from all across the country, including Colorado and Washington, indicated that the Federal Department of Justice will not be suing to overturn legalization in Washington and Colorado. Yes, this is amazing news. We're going to get more of this news to you. There's been a memo that's been released by the Department of Justice to give them new guidelines that supersede the previous Ogden and Cole memos. New guidelines on how federal prosecutors should deal with marijuana legalization and medical marijuana throughout the United States. It's a trust but verify approach. It is a watershed moment in marijuana legalization news. We'll talk about it in depth in our Behind the Headlines segment today. Also on today's show, we got a few more of the interviews left over from Seattle Hemp Fest, including attorneys Matt Abel and Mara Felson. We got our pro go-go dancers taking a couple of dabs. And for Groovin' Thursday today, a little look at hip-hop from the crowd's view of the main stage of Seattle Hemp Fest. Also, coming up on Saturday, it's International Overdose Prevention Day, and I've got a little radical rant to talk about drug overdoses, which have now become, for the first time ever, the number one injury cause of death in the United States. I've got an article up about that at High Time Times.com. I encourage you all to check out my articles on HighTimes.com, and we're going to talk about that in today's Radical Rant. We also want to remind you, we got new items for sale at the 420 Radio Store, and want to thank Rolla J and Jam Band Fan for your recent orders of the new 420 Radio pin and the new 420 Radio stickers. Just mailed those out yesterday. They should be to you in a couple of days. If you'd like to order, visit our shop at 420radio.org slash shop, or just go to 420radio.org and look for the store and uh, you got all sorts of cool things that you can buy there help support listener supported cannabis community radio marijuana legalization radio kept free for the masses thanks to vip supporters like you you can become a vip member by visiting 420radio.org today send in a one-time donation or support us monthly for as little as 9.99 a month Hey, thanks everybody for all of your support. There's so much news today, I didn't even have time to put a tie on. We got our 420 Radio News coming next. Stick around. We'll be right back after these messages from our 420 friendly sponsors. Support these advertisers because their ad money goes straight to the Russ Belleville Show. of the Marijuana Nation. 
Everywhere you go in Washington State, things are greener than ever. Why? Because last November, Washington voters made adult recreational use of cannabis legal, which is why the High Times U.S. Cannabis Cup is coming to Seattle once again to salute Washington's historic victory. If you love cannabis, then get yourself over to the High Times U.S. Cannabis Cup on September 7th and 8th as the marijuana community gathers in force to celebrate our newfound freedom. Meet the businesses of the emerging cannabis industry. Learn about cultivation, topical oils, concentrates, edibles, and more. Sample dabs, buds, and delectable morsels of cannabis cuisine. Then rock out on Saturday night at our smoking Hot concert featuring Slightly Stupid and Red Man. And of course on Sunday evening we present the U.S. Cannabis Cups for the top indica, sativas, hybrids, edibles, and concentrates of the great state of Washington. Plus, we honor professional traveler and outspoken cannabis advocate Rick Steves with the High Times Lifetime Achievement Award. Come to Fremont Studios on September 7th and 8th in Seattle for a historic celebration. Go to MedCanCup.com for details. Be part of the growing cannabis community. This is a banana. This is a cat. This is fire. This is harmless and actually helpful to some people. Don't believe everything you hear. The fact is that every major health organization rejects smoked marijuana. Now that the smoke is cleared, discover truecompassion.org. your 420 Radio News for Thursday, August 29th, 2013. I'm Russ Belville. Department of Justice issues memo, and we will discuss that more in our Behind the Headlines segment, basically allowing the states of Washington and Colorado to move forward with their marijuana legalization laws and perhaps providing guidance to protect the 20 states in America that have medical cannabis laws. More details in Behind the Headlines. New study, marijuana is most popular illegal drug worldwide from CBS News. Marijuana is the most popular illegal drug worldwide, according to the first ever global survey of illicit drug use. The study also found that addictions to painkillers like Vicodin, Oxycontin and Codeine kill more people than any other drug. The study was published online Thursday in the journal Lancet. Of the estimated 78,000 deaths in 2010 because of illegal drug use, more than half were because of painkiller addictions. Theo Voss of the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation at the University of Washington, the study's senior author, said countries with harsh laws against drugs had worse death rates for addicts when compared to countries that relied on other policies to wean people off of drugs, such as needle exchange programs and methadone clinics. Arizona boy to be given medical marijuana for seizures from ABC News. Xander Welton, age 5, was born with cortical dysplasia, a genetic defect that disrupts cellular patterns in the brain and is often the cause of epilepsy. Xander had his first seizure when he was 9 months old and now has them weekly. His parents, Jennifer and Jacob Welton of Mesa, Arizona, said they had tried multiple treatments, including various medications, brain surgery, and even shock therapy to help Xander. When Jennifer and Jacob Welton saw videos of other children who appeared to be thriving after they'd been treated with medical marijuana, they pursued a medical marijuana card for Xander and eventually found a doctor who was willing to treat Xander's epilepsy that way. Once they received their card, Welton said they would treat Xander with cannabidiol oil, or CBD, a chemical found in marijuana. To qualify for the program, two doctors must approve treatment. The minor's parent or guardian must be designated as a caregiver to receive the medical marijuana card, and the designated caregiver must live with the patient. Mormon mom wants medical marijuana for her sick son from the Salt Lake Tribune. Jennifer May has tried 25 treatments in 10 years, a mix of prescribed diets and drugs to quiet the lightning in her son's brain. Only two eased Stockton May's seizures, but their toxic side effects ravaged his bones and immune system, and the relief was temporary. His rare and intractable form of epilepsy, Dravet syndrome, always found a way around the treatment, said his mom, a self-described conservative and devout Mormon who is now pursuing what for her was once unthinkable, medical marijuana. She initially thought CBD was just another false lead, but earlier this month she saw a CNN report about CBD stopping Dravet syndrome seizures in a Colorado girl named Charlotte. I called Charlotte's mom and was convinced, said May. She was able to walk, able to eat, and went from 300 seizures a week to one. 
Barry A. Hazel Jr., atheist, should be compensated, compensated by state. This from HuffingtonPost.com. An atheist parolee should be compensated by California after the state returned him to prison for refusing to participate in a religiously oriented rehabilitation program, a federal court ruled Friday, August 23rd. A three-judge panel of the U.S. Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals unanimously ruled that a lower court judge erred when he denied Barry Hazel Jr., a drug offender and an atheist, a new trial after a jury awarded him no damages. Hazel was serving time for methamphetamine possession in 2007 when, as a condition of his parole, he was required to participate in a 12-step program that recognizes a higher power. Hazel sued, alleging his First Amendment rights had been violated. The district court agreed, but allowed to stand a jury's conclusion that he deserved no compensation. Friday's ruling, Friday's ruling requires Hazel be awarded a new trial for damages and compensation. Toronto Mayor says he's smoked a lot of marijuana. From World News, NBCNews.com. Toronto Mayor Rob Ford, who denied allegations earlier this year that he was caught smoking crack cocaine on camera, casually admitted on Wednesday that he has smoked, quote, a lot of marijuana. Ford made global headlines in May when U.S. blog Gawker and the Toronto Star both reported that their reporters had seen a cell phone video that appeared to show Ford using crack cocaine. Ford is the third Canadian politician to admit using marijuana in less than a week. Ontario Premier Kathleen Wynne said earlier on Wednesday she had smoked the drug very infrequently decades ago, but stopped before getting into politics. Justin Trudeau, the Liberal Party leader, admitted he had used it five or six times in his life after being elected to Parliament. This has been your 420 Radio News for Thursday, August 29th, 2013. I'm Russ Belville. When we come back, we go behind the scenes of the breakthrough news that the Obama administration will allow Colorado and Washington to move forward on marijuana legalization. You're listening to the Russ Belville Show on 420radio.org. We'll be right back. Adam Hand of Handmade Apparel produces quality custom designs for t-shirts, hats, and other apparel. Handmade Apparel is the official design shop for 420 Radio, The Russ Belville Show, Ganja John, and Cascadia Concentrates, among many clients who rely on Adam Hand for everything from short-run custom projects to full-run clothing lines. Adam's meticulous designs are individually crafted and screened in vibrant high-definition color. Visit handmadeapparel.biz to browse the selection of handmade gear or to get a personal quote for your own designs. Handmade Apparel, a proud supporter of 420radio.org. The Rust Belleville Show reminds you to never smoke and drive impaired. Hang out for a while and share. This day was hard and your work was long. You need a break from all that's wrong. You better look at the clock because it's 419. Time to reach in that pocket for your bag of green and smoke that weed. You're tuned smoke into the Rust Belleville Show. Welcome back, everybody. Time for us to go behind the headlines on today's breaking news that the Obama administration will allow Colorado and Washington's marijuana legalization. In a historic move, the U.S. Department of Justice under Attorney General Eric Holder released a memo of guidance to U.S. attorneys to allow the states of Washington and Colorado to move forward with their implementation of legal, regulated marijuana markets. Entitled, Guidance Regarding Marijuana Enforcement, Deputy U.S. Attorney General James M. Cole explains how this new memo supersedes the so-called Ogden Memo regarding federal priorities in medical marijuana states. Cole writes, quote, The guidance set forth herein applies to all federal enforcement activity concerning marijuana in all states, end quote. As written, this memo promises to not only allow Colorado's and Washington's recreational marijuana programs to proceed, but should also relieve federal pressure against medical marijuana programs in the 20 states and Washington, D.C. 
The Obama administration makes clear that it intends to enforce the Controlled Substances Act, or CSA, but notes that the Justice Department is, quote, committed to using its limited investigative and prosecutorial resources to address the most significant threats, end quote. The memo then lists eight priorities U.S. attorneys should consider for federal marijuana enforcement, which include distribution to minors, sales by gangs and cartels, diversion to non-legal states, using marijuana laws as cover for other crimes, use of violence and firearms, drug driving and other public health consequences, the spoiling of public lands, and to continue to disallow the use of marijuana on federal property. So long as the state's medical and recreational programs address these priorities, the memo promises, quote, conduct in compliance with those laws and regulations is less likely to threaten the federal priorities set forth above, end quote. The memo even suggests that, quote, a robust system may affirmatively address those priorities, end quote. However, the Obama administration will be taking what Attorney General Holder called a trust but verify approach when speaking today to state governors during a conference call. If, in Justice's opinion, the states fail to uphold these eight federal priorities, the Obama administration, quote, may seek to challenge the regulatory structure itself in addition to continuing to bring individual enforcement actions, including criminal prosecutions, focused on those harms, end quote. In a paragraph relevant to America's largest medical marijuana dispensary, Oakland's Harborside Health Center, and many other large for-profit or non-profit dispensary operations, the administration explained that, quote, prosecutors should not consider the size or commercial nature of a marijuana operation alone, end quote, when deciding whether to prosecute. Rather, they should weigh each case against the eight listed federal priorities. Of course, the final paragraph of the memo makes clear that this is merely a memo of guidance to federal prosecutors, and it makes no guarantees and creates no rights whatsoever for those engaged in the state lawful cultivation, distribution, sales, and possession of marijuana. It remains to be seen whether this memo is truly a watershed moment for federal acceptance of marijuana legalization. The last time a Department of Justice memo guided U.S. attorneys not to waste prosecutorial resources on medical marijuana pro providers who were, quote, in clear and unambiguous compliance with existing state laws providing for the medical use of marijuana, end quote, we saw the Obama administration engage in the most medical marijuana raids of any presidential term in history. So while we are very excited to hear about this memo and it seems to indicate a change in direction in federal policy, keep in mind that these federal policies are enforced at the U.S. attorney level. And we still have to rely on people like Melinda Hogg to interpret this memo and to use her prosecutorial resources in accordance with it. The text of the entire memorandum is available through many outlets. My piece written up on it is available at nationalcannabiscoalition.com as well as theweedblog.com. And unlike other outlets, I've actually given you the entire text of the memo rather than a PDF so that you can easily cut and paste it from those websites uh, into any uh, Facebook or Twitter or your own blogs uh, if you so choose. Uh, this uh, memo also makes note of the October 2009 Ogden memo and the June 2011 Cole memo, and again, does seem to supersede these memos. With Attorney General Eric Holder being called before Senator Patrick Leahy's Judiciary Committee to answer questions with regard to marijuana enforcement and the over-incarceration of Americans in this country, with all the pressure that is being brought to bear by the now 20 states that have legalized the medical use of marijuana, and with the uh, Obama administration and Eric Holder seeming to want to address the over-incarceration of Americans, this memo provides more indication that perhaps in Obama's second term, he is interested in making positive strides in the area of the Department of Justice and in specifically the area of the war on Americans using marijuana. <laughs> It's a hell of a day, Brian. Oh, hell of a hell of a day. Uh, where's where's freedom? 
We're going to celebrate by uh, seeing if we can avoid any federal prosecution uh, while we're uh, enjoying this bowl. Hope you do too. Oh, have you ever met that funny repo man? A repo man. Have you ever met that funny repo man? A repo man. If he said he swam to China, he would send you South Carolina. Then you know you talking to that repo man. Marijuana and alcohol are the two most popular recreational drugs in America. Marijuana smoking is non-toxic, relatively safe, and has a low risk of dependence. Alcohol drinking is potentially fatal, dangerous to society, and is quite addictive. Marijuana is safer, so why are we driving people to drink? That's the question of the new book, Marijuana is Safer, So Why Are We Driving People to Drink? by Paul Armentano, Mason Tvert, and Steve Fox. Visit Amazon.com or ChelseaGreen.com today to order your copy of Marijuana is Safer or visit MarijuanaIsSafer.com. Hi, this is Dan Michaels. If you're looking for professional voice talent for your commercial or podcast, I'm your man. Visit danmichaelsaudio.com for more information. Everyone knows music and marijuana go together, so let's wind up our 20 after break with the Russ Belleville Show's Daily Toker Tunes, the best in pod safe 420 music from around the web. Today is Groovin' Thursday, featuring rap, hip-hop, soul, and funk music. You can get downloads and more information about all our daily Tucker tunes by visiting music.radicalrust.com. Now, sit back and enjoy your daily Tucker tunes. Hey everybody, welcome back. Time for some Groovin' Thursday music. And of course, we're really, really happy today with that whole news of the memo and everything going on. So, not time for us to have ourselves a good Groovin' Thursday. And of course, you know, the past couple of weeks we've been playing a lot of video from the Seattle Hemp Fest where we have such a good time. And one of my favorite things about Seattle Hemp Fest is the breadth of different styles of music that are available there. Uh, it's just amazing. All the different kind of bands. There's like four or five different stages with music going on and you get everything from metal to country to a little bit of jazz and hip-hop and rap and there's even a dance safe stage where you get that electronic dance music this next band I, I gotta apologize to them in advance because i don't know their name there was a number of bands and my uh the date on my camera got messed up and so i have no idea when they played otherwise i would just go look it up on the hemp fest uh, website but there was a hip-hop band playing on the main stage on sunday and i had a chance to walk through the crowd kind of get a feel for seattle hemp fest get to enjoy it and see it from the crowd's point of view so we'll switch to that video right now this is seattle hemp fest an unknown hip-hop band and the view from the crowd Chase those crazy ball heads. 
Since your reward for our love Telling us of your kind of all We gonna chase those crazies Chase those crazies Chase those crazy Christians out of our town Don't come up to me with your fake ass religion Reading your fake ass Bible to me It's freedom of speech right here Who's getting high with head P.E. today? Here come the con man Coming with this con plan We won't take the rise We've got to fight for what's right We're gonna chase the Are you or is someone you know a marijuana smoker? Have you or is someone in your family been arrested for a marijuana violation? You need to know the truth about pot. Normal, the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws, is the most comprehensive source of information regarding marijuana and its effects on health as well as legal issues. Normal even offers a database of lawyers specializing in cannabis in your area. Normal, the nation's largest and most successful marijuana law reform organization, has spent decades gathering the knowledge and science on everything related to cannabis. Normal is the best resource to find out the truth about marijuana, connect with a lawyer in your area, or help find an end to prohibition. Information is available at normal.org, that's N-O-R-M-L dot org, or toll free at 888-67-NORMAL. The cannabis community includes a diverse set of activists and nonprofits working to end the prohibition of marijuana. We take the time to hear the stories of reform on the I suggest you all begin smoking marijuana. When you die and want to carry it on a pad, that's the pad. The pad you will use, huh? You can just take my urn, stick it right here. On an oil slick pad, I'm just messing with him endlessly. If you got the guy that's got the stamp, that is Jesus. We love you guys. He's using some oddball thing. Man, it might not work so well. I want to find this. Oil slick. Why would there be Jesus? If you're getting uncurved. Um, we are out of the pink and the baby blue. Matt's here, where it's much less free. Well, yes, I live in the wild, wild Midwest. This is Matt Abel here. At Wait a minute, we got to see this. Should he advise one dollar? That's the cutest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> we could put that in some lawyer's office, right? Website. We charge much more for our shit. <laughs> <advice. laughs> yeah, once you have a law degree, it's the hundreds of dollars you charge for shitty advice. Okay. <laughs> We're just kidding. But anyway, making it legal in Michigan. I'm sorry, Russ? Making it legal in Michigan? Making it legal in Michigan. Well, we're doing it city by city. We're decriminalizing it, but we need to raise the money to do a statewide ballot initiative. And we're hoping to do that by 2016, sooner if possible. 2016 would be good. Get everybody on the bandwagon. A lot of states would be hitting them at that time. Well, yeah, absolutely. It's just a matter of getting the signatures. We need about a half a million dollars to get about three, 400,000 signatures. That, yeah. that would put it on the ballot in Michigan. I think Michigan can do it. You guys passed medical, what, 63%? Something well, that's like that? right. That's Every right. county. Yeah, good memory. Even, Every even, county in Michigan. Even the John McCain counties voted for, for medical marijuana. That's right. Fantastic. Can you say? So we ran into Matt and Mara 
We do need a change, but the change that we need is impairment-based corrections, not substance-based. Yeah, exactly. I mean, if, they're not testing uh, impairment levels on Oxy or Dilaudid or anything exactly. else Exactly. Like if you're fact, impaired, you shouldn't be driving, but just because you have a substance in you doesn't mean you're impaired. Yeah, the government's own uh, Schedule 3 Marinol pill on the label says, until you know how this may affect you, don't drive or operate heavy machinery, which kind of says, when you do know how it will affect you, you use your can. best judgment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Like we trust adults. Thank you so much, Steve, for everything. And uh, keep up the, the good buttons. work, Russ. Keep up the work on the buttons here. Loving it. Hey, a little bigger. What are you after? You got it. You got to charge the money, man. Hey, I got to charge the money. Be doing that to my dog. <laughs> Got it, whatever it is. Yeah. 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 more of it, too. Is there dabs in there? <laughs> There's fucking dabs in there. Gotta be dabs in there. There must be dabs down there. Gotta be dabs somewhere. Give me those dabs. My dog ain't playing. <laughs> He's after something. That's right, exactly. And that's my First Amendment. I can say that. I, I'm, I'm not going to say it again because of all the children around here, but you know what? It, it's it's time to say that. Um, you know what? I lied again. You know what? Fuck CPS! <laughs> all right. Anyways, thank you guys so much. If you can, please donate. We're trying to get a family attorney that has balls, one that doesn't want, that ain't scared, just like all of us up here right now. That's the thing. There's a lot of people saying you should jump through their hoops. No, 
No, Fuck it ain't going to happen anymore. I, I did their assessments. I came back nonviolent, blah, blah, blah. They're coming down and they're picking on me about this whole marijuana thing. I'm a medical patient. I took another assessment. The guy told me there's there's a a difference between an addiction and being using for your uh, medicine. And I use for my medicine. I'm not chemically dependent on it. Um, that's bullshit. Non-toxic, it's just bullshit. Um, I love my daughter. I want to be a dad. I really do. She's the only child I have. Um, she's so pretty. Mom disappeared. She's gone. She signed off on dependency for a year and disappeared. We have no idea where she is. We don't care where she is. I would love for her to be her, you know, mom, but I'm dad. I want my child. I'm fighting for my child. I am fighting for Lily. I am fighting yeah. my ass off. I'm up here in front of you guys. I, you know what? CPS is going to see this. You know what? Once again, fuck CPS. Thank you guys. Thank you, Billy. Thank you, Sarah. And thank, uh, thank you. you want to introduce yourself? I'm Reba. This is our, this is my baby, Zephyrus, and my husband, Brian. Yeah. yeah. You guys use marijuana, don't you? Yeah. Very, very passionate uh, speech. Very emotional to hear. All right, Radical Rats 420 Radio. We're here with Emily Joe, who's got the Just Dab It t-shirt. And uh, we are getting ready to dab here at Dab Central. How has your hemp fest been so far? My hemp fest has been fantastic. Yes. yes. And oh, and you've got your friend, your friend's name again? I'm Velvet. Velvet. Yep. Of course you are. Velvet and Emily Joe. We are going to dab over here at Dab Central. Mm -hmm. So, but tell folks your business, what you're doing here, and what you're uh, promoting. I run ProGoGo or Facebook.com backslash P R O G O G O and. I run professional go-go's. We don't like to slack. We don't go out and smoke cigarettes outside the whole time we should be inside the club dancing or drinking. I don't allow drinking. Yeah. So it's not my thing. I'm all about smoking uh, weed. So. Right. Well, let's get to that. We're going to come over here to Dab Central if we can. you got to be chill. Of course, the well folks here at Dab Central, but we're going to... we got Big Daddy Fink with Dabby Krill. All right, so we got Big Daddy Fink. All right, so Emily is going to be doing our dab. We're going to be just fine. Chair, you can have a chair. Don't hold it in. Just breathe it on out. <laughs> so that was effective? That was effective. <laughs> Good for you. Just dab it. Just dab it. <laughs> All right. Velvet, you're up. Right. Do you think you can take this hit better than uh, Emily Jo did? Oh, yeah. I know I can. No coughing? Nuh-uh. The full... The full Dab. We'll find out. <laughs> I bet I can though. All right, we're gonna get you from this side. Oh, yeah. There's Velvet doing her full dab. Oh, there's still some in there. What's this? Breathe it on. What's this? You don't have to hold it in. Oh no. This may be a tie. We may have to have a tiebreaker. Who knows? Oh, it's so close. <laughs> See how much you left in there? My goodness, Velvet. All right, so I don't know, folks. It may be a tie between Velvet and, and, and Emily. Jo. What do you think? She coughed a little too. What do you think? Yeah, I think it was a good one. Yeah, I, it was a tie, I guess. Might have to have a tie break. So, what do you two think about being 420 Radio? New I'm all for it. I love it. All right. Your own stuff too. We can. Yes, yes it's all about public radio. Why don't you go and promote your own stuff? <laughs> well, we did. Okay, I, we did. Fine. But do it again. Do it I again. hire male and female dancers, and currently we are having auditions, um, 18 and up, at Neighbors Nightclub in Seattle. Um, if you guys know where that is, it's 
on Capitol Hill. So, right across from you. Thank you. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. And we'll catch you guys on Facebook, Twitter. Absolutely yes. can. Yep. Pro Go Go. Look us up on Facebook. All right, thank you for stopping by the Dam Central. Appreciate it. So nice to meet you. It was a pleasure. Have a good time. Thank you. All right, we had ourselves a good time at Dab Central there for Seattle Hemp Fest. And remember, folks, if you've never been to Seattle Hemp Fest, you must go at least once in your life. It's always the third weekend of August. You can start planning now. You've got to make it there. All right, hey, uh, we might have a special guest caller dialing up in the next few minutes, our good friend Brave Michaela with an update on her condition. So we'll go to commercial break and we'll just see what happens. Otherwise, Radical Ram coming up next. We'll be right back after these messages from our 420 friendly sponsors. Support these advertisers because their ad money goes straight to the Rust Belleville Show. You're tuned into the Rust Belleville Show. The voice of the marijuana nation. The greatest threats to liberty has been the government taking people's liberty for things that people are in favor of. The Pew Research Group shows that 52% of Americans think marijuana should not be illegal. And yet there are people in jail, and your Justice Department is continuing to put people in jail for sale and use on occasion of marijuana. That's something the American public has finally caught up with. It was a cultural lag, and it's been an injustice for 40 years in this country to take people's liberty for something that was similar to alcohol. You have continued what is allowing the Mexican cartels power and the power to make money, ruin Mexico, and hurt our country by having a prohibition in the late 20th and 21st century. We saw it didn't work in this country in the 20s. We remedied it. This is the time to remedy this prohibition. And I would hope you would do so. All right. Of course, that's uh, Representative uh, Steve Cohen from Tennessee, who is speaking uh, to Attorney General Eric Holder. And now we go back to our telephone lines where we've got a very special guest calling in. Is that brave Michaela on the line? Hello. Hi, Michaela. How are you doing? Good. I'm glad you called in. What are Are you driving right now or are you at home? No, we're at a grandma's. You're at grandma's house, huh? Yep. Well, that's fantastic. How are you feeling lately? Good. Good. Are you still having to do any maintenance or anything like that? Yeah, I'm still on maintenance, but my counts are low. Your counts are low. That's good to hear. And uh, I heard rumor that you got yep. some pretty long hair now. Yep. How long is your hair? Super long. Super long? Yeah. Is it past your chin? No. Oh, okay. But it's still growing, huh? Yep. So, so uh, you must be pretty excited that uh, uh, you know things are happening, and, and school's probably starting pretty soon for you, right? Yep. Do you get to go back to school? What? Do you get to go back to school she's, soon? She's going to be homeschooled. Yep. I'm going to do homeschool on the computer. Oh, homeschooling on the computer. Okay. Yep. Are, that sounds pretty exciting. Yep. And I also got all the school supplies for it, too. Yep. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I, I always remember when I was a kid, I always liked at the end of summertime, you got to go buy pencils and papers and markers and all sorts of stuff. Did you get some neat stuff? Uh-huh. What would you get that you really like? Does that have a cake. Yeah? Wow. So, hey, what grade are you going to be in? I'm going to be in second grade. Second grade. Okay. So that means you're probably doing a lot of reading and a lot of math stuff, huh? Yep. Yeah. That'll be that'll be pretty good. Hey, our folks that are watching the show, they really, really love you. Uh-huh. They say so right now in the chat room. Hello. Hello. And Lively Libra, one of our fans out there in the chat room, wants to know if you have written any new songs. Yep. Do you have a song for us? Uh-huh. Oh, well, I'll just let you sing a song then, okay? <laughs> this one, when I sing it when I get mad. Okay, this is the song for when you get mad. Go ahead. When you get so mad that you want to roar, take a deep breath and count to four. One, two, three, four. 
Yay. When you get real mad and you want to roar, take a deep breath and count to four. That's good advice right there. Hey, Michaela, I miss you. I miss you. And yeah. Bacon Dan misses you, too. Uh-huh. Yeah, we all miss you here. So uh, what makes you mad and you have to sing the mad song? Mm. When Roddy sometimes takes something away from me. Oh, your sister, yeah. Mm. Yeah, sometimes when you have a, a brother or a sister, you, that, that'll happen, and, and sometimes it makes you mad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm so glad to hear that you're doing well, and I'm even more glad to hear that you're beating your cancer. Yep. And you know, there's been a lot of kids that we've been talking about lately. We've seen a lot of them on TV shows that have things that aren't cancer. They have like seizures and they have other diseases and cannabis is helping them too. Uh-huh. Does that make you happy? Yep. Oh, that's awesome. How's your mom and dad doing? Good. Good. Are they are they doing more like TV shows and radio shows? Um Daddy did a pop. Um, news in Seattle a few a few weeks ago. Wow, news in Seattle. That's pretty cool. Yep. Do you think do you think you're famous? Do you think people think you're famous? Uh-huh. <laughs> do you like being famous? Yeah. Well, good. I think you're a great example and I think that other little kids out there when they hear your voice and when they hear how well you're doing, I think it makes them less scared. Me too. Me too. All right. Well, I thank you so much for calling in, and I hope that you're back in Portland sometime soon so we can see you. Uh huh. I was in Portland yesterday. Oh, when I missed you in Portland yesterday, we could have you could have shown me how long your hair was. I'm trying to go to Hempstock. Yep. Hempstock. That's yeah, they're right. They're going to be speaking on Sunday. That's right. Hempstock is September seventh and eighth. It's not this weekend, but it's next weekend. And so, yeah, you'll you'll meet all sorts of people there. What? I'm going to sell shirts there and, like, little ribbon pants and... And yeah. some of your bracelets, like the one that I've been wearing every day for months. <laughs> well, that's really cool. Well, I hope that that helps and you can raise some money to help pay medical bills and stuff and... And I know more people will see you and your mom and dad at Hempstock, and, and they'll know more about how cannabis is medicine, and it'll be good for everybody. Uh-huh. All right. Michaela, you take care. I want to thank you for calling in, and uh, we hope to see you soon. Uh-huh. All right. Do you want to say anything to the people that are listening to you to say goodbye? Uh-huh. Be brave and be Bye-bye. Be straight. Be brave and be strong. Thank you so much, Brave Michaela. We will talk to you again very, very soon. Appreciate you calling in. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We come back. We'll have some well, radical rants for you. From getting Stick all around. Up on weed and then getting behind the wheel. The Russ Belleville Show reminds you to never smoke and drive impaired. Hang out for a while. Share. Your mom and daddy out of the room. I gotta get you up on this. You know who I am. Snake. Dealing in weed, coke, crack. Your choice. Take one hit and you'll do anything to cop more. Steal from your mama. Lie. Cheat on your homeboys. But hey, that's the price you pay when you deal with dudes like me. Now, some folks will tell you that I'm dealing in poison. But hey, do I look like the kind of guy that would do that to a kid like you? Yes! You want answers? I'm as bad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! You want answers? You have offended my family. I think I'm entitled. You want answers! I want the truth! And you have offended a Shaolin Temple. You can't handle the truth! Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. Radical Brand. All right, got a few things to talk about for today's Radical Rant. And most recently, I just uh, penned an article for HighTimes.com with respect to a, uh, it was a, a note I got from Stephen Gutwillig out at the uh, Drug Policy Alliance. And they were pointing out that this Saturday is International Overdose Prevention Day and wanted to raise awareness about overdose deaths. And uh, most 
interesting stat I found here is that in the year 2010, for the first time, overdose deaths from drugs became the leading injury cause of death. Now, not just the overall cause of death, because that's still a uh, heart disease, right? But, you know, for injury cause of death, drug overdose is now the leading injury cause of death. And in fact, for people aged 25 to 64, more people die of drug overdoses than from car crashes. So the Drug Policy Alliance is wanting us all to recognize that Saturday, August 31st is International Overdose Awareness Day. And I just wanted to take a look at that with the perspective of those of us who are fighting for marijuana legalization, because my belief, if we legalize marijuana, we could overcome a lot of these overdose deaths. Here's some stats for you. Drug overdose deaths have more than doubled since 1999. According to the Centers for Disease Control, 60% of overdose deaths in 2010 were related to prescription pharmaceuticals. And of those 22,000 plus deaths, three out of four were related to opioid painkillers like Oxycontin, Vicodin, and Dilaudid. And three out of 10 were related to benzodiazepines like Valium, Xanax, and Ambien. And yes, 75% plus 30% is 105%. There were some overdoses that were from both drugs. So that's the reason for that. Now, why this is frustrating is because cannabis, we have found, works synergistically with opioids to kill pain. If you use cannabis along with Vicodin, cannabis along with Oxycontin, cannabis with Dilaudid, you'll have to use less Oxycontin, Vicodin, or Dilaudid to achieve the same effect. In fact, when they studied the patients at the Berkeley Patients Group in California, they found that their uh, patients that were using opioid painkillers, a a two-thirds of them were able to reduce the amount of opiate prescriptions they had to use to achieve the same effect, reductions from as much as a third to half the number of pills. How many of those 22,000 overdose deaths from prescription opiates could have been avoided if cannabis had been a legitimate treatment option? How many of the deaths from Xanax, Ambien, and Valium could have been avoided if people could have used cannabis for their anxiety or their insomnia? And another potential cause for the doubling in prescription overdose deaths can be traced to their marketing. Prior to 1997, advertisement for pharmaceuticals was extremely limited. But thanks to a rule change at the FDA that year, Big Pharma was freed up to market its drugs direct to you, the consumer. The United States and New Zealand are the only countries in the world that allow a drug company to market directly to you. And in other nations, Big Pharma is mostly limited to marketing to doctors, you know, people who should have some expertise on the matter. Now, here's another stat. In 1995, Big Pharma spent $340 million advertising its drugs, and again, mostly advertising them to doctors and hospitals. In 2009, the advertising budget for Big Pharma was $4.5 billion. That's an increase of 1,300%. Now, for the other 40% of the drug overdoses that are related to illicit drugs, like cocaine, meth, heroin, and so on, we'd like to note that the widespread use of drug testing in academia and in the job market is incredibly biased against cannabis consumers. Marijuana metabolites are going to show up in your test for days, far longer than the metabolites for cocaine, meth, heroin, and other drugs are flushed from your system. And few schools or jobs are testing for alcohol abuse. So this creates a perverse incentive for those who want to use recreational drugs to choose ones that, unlike cannabis, can cause a fatal overdose. And in the unfortunate case that someone does overdose, laws criminalizing the possession of cannabis and other drugs work to prevent witnesses from calling for emergency medical help. You know, just in case the witnesses might have some weed on them and they get arrested and jailed. Now, Drug Policy Alliance has been working since 2007 to help pass what are called 911 Good Samaritan Laws, and they've passed them in 13 states and Washington, D.C. These laws provide some level of immunity from arrest and prosecution if the possessor of drugs is calling 911 to help someone out with a drug overdose. Now, this is, this is a good start, 
But keep in mind the legalization of possession in Washington and Colorado freed every pot smoker to call 911, and not just for drug overdoses, but also to report criminal activity. Doesn't that sound like a better solution? Why should the pot smoker only be able to call 911 when someone's overdosing? How about being able to call 911 when someone's broken into your house? I was reading a story on, uh, I can't remember if it was Salon or what outlet it was. Uh, maybe it was Ladybud. I think it was Ladybud. About a woman whose house had been broken into for the third time. And she called cops to check out the break-in. And they didn't do much investigation of the break-in, but once they smelled pot in the house, they did a whole lot of investigation of her personal effects, of, of her drawers, until they could find something to bust her for. And it's because we've set up this perverse profit incentive. There's not a whole lot of profit for the cops in spending a lot of, pros a lot of investigatory time trying to find who broke into your house. If they find the stuff the person stole, they just have to give it back to you. But in the case of a drug crime, they can boost their stats, they can get a bunch of arrests, and if they find any money or property, they get to keep it for themselves. So these are things that I think everyone should think about with respect to International Overdose Day. And finally, uh, to round, round up this, uh, uh, this rant, uh, I just want to go back to the Obama administration memo, the Department of Justice memo, to let you know that Project SAM has already released a news release on this. And, of course, they're predicting the end of the world as we know it. Uh, I've got a satire up on smartapproaches.com if you'd like to read that. But I just wanted to point out, they, ha they make a point that in 2009, when the Ogden memo came out, all these medical marijuana dispensaries just suddenly you know, sprang into existence and caused all these terrible harms. Here's some of the statistical differences between 2009 and 2011 in California, Colorado, Michigan, and Oregon where the most dispensaries opened up. Traffic fatalities went down. People who've tried marijuana went down. Children who've tried marijuana, well, it went up a little in California and Colorado, went down in Michigan and Oregon. State domestic product, that would be how productive the economies are, went up in all four states. Injuries and illnesses per 100 workers went up in all the states that had data. Or, I'm sorry, went down, went down. There were fewer injuries and illnesses, fewer missed days of work since 2009. High school graduation rates went up in every state. Uh, they went down one-tenth of a percent in Colorado. But otherwise, high school graduation rates went up. Violent crime per 100,000 persons went down in all four of those states. So clearly... Clearly, there's a connection between the commercialization of marijuana in the medical marijuana industries in those four states in 2009 and nothing bad happening in 2011. The sky is not falling. The chicken littles of the rehabitionists, the chicken littles of the prohibitionists are finally being exposed. Even the Attorney General doesn't believe them anymore. And I, for one, am going to enjoy watching Kevin Sabet and his ilk slowly fade into obscurity as America accepts legal marijuana. That's all the time we got for today. For Brian the Red, I'm Radical Russ. Thanks for joining us. And until next time, take care of each other, tokers. This is the Russ Belleville Show. The Russ Belleville Show is blogging and podcasting daily at RadicalRuss.com. You take a scene, you plan it, you grow it, you giant, you roll it, you smoke it. You take a scene, you plan it.